The year was 2007 and poker's biggest players had completely flipped for golf. Over the course of a few weeks that season, the Bellagio's high stakes tables remained eerily vacant. The golf action had gotten bigger than poker. Everyone who played in the big game seemed to be out on the golf course, including Phil Ivey. In this video, we talk about the controversial story of Phil Ivey and one of the greatest alleged golf hustles of all time. In golf, some players are naturally better than others. To make the game fair, players assess everyone's skill level and give extra shots to those who need them. This helps level the playing field. For instance, if one player is really good and another isn't, the skilled player might give up a shot each hole to make things fair. Phil Ivey was initially not skilled at golf and his fellow players often teased him about his lack of ability. The other individuals in this story are quite proficient at golf. Mark Goodwin is a scratch golfer indicating he had a handicap of zero and Ram Baswani on the other hand had a seven handicap signifying a solid level of skill in the game. Ram consistently outperformed Phil in golf. Given Ivy's determination to win millions at the poker table, however, it was only a matter of time before he grew impatient with his golf defeats. Our story unfolds in Australia during the Aussie Millions where Phil Ivey, Ram Vaswani and Mark Goodwin along with Eric Sackstrom met at a golf course. Curious about Ivey's recent golfing activities, Vaswani and Goodwin inquire if he had been playing golf regularly to which Phil Ivey says no. But little did they know that Phil Ivey started taking golf lessons and playing obsessively to improve his game. He enlisted the help of top golfing professionals and dedicated a significant amount of time to practice on the golf course, thus improving his score quite a bit. They still couldn't agree on strokes and finally they agreed that because Eric Lindgren had recently given Phil Ivey 10 strokes in a game they had recently played, that would be the number of strokes Phil Ivey would get. Once that decision was made, they began their game. Two things happen. Goodwin and Vaswani performed below their usual standard while Ivy demonstrated a remarkable improvement in his game. They struggle against Ivy, finding themselves in a difficult situation from which they couldn't recover. It became evident that Phil Ivy had significantly enhanced his skills. They started with $10,000 a hole but soon the stakes were as high as $50,000 per hole. After completing 7 holes, Goodwin was down $450,000 and angrily accused Phil Ivey of cheating before storming off the course. Are you ready to take your poker game to the next level? Look no further than Replay Poker, the ultimate destination for poker enthusiasts. Replay Poker offers you a thrilling, free and competitive platform where you can sharpen your poker skills anytime, anywhere. The best part? No downloads required. Dive straight into the action and start playing right away. Get started with free chips on sign up and enjoy frequent promotions that keep the excitement going. With a variety of games like Texas Hold'em, Omaha and 7 Card Stud, there's always a game that suits your taste and skill level. Worried about managing your chips? Fret not. Replay Poker gives you the freedom to choose. Whether you want to buy chips and jump into higher stake levels or prefer earning them through their daily offers, they've got you covered. And if you run out of chips, you can top up for free anytime. At Replay Poker, it's just not about the game, it's about the people. Join their vibrant online community filled with poker enthusiasts just like you. Connect, chat and learn from the very best in the game. So what are you waiting for? Sign up to Replay Poker today and elevate your poker experience. Access a wide variety of games, educational resources and competitive tournaments. Become a poker pro at Replay Poker where the fun, excitement and community never stop. Eric Sackstrom, equally furious, persevered for two more holes but eventually left in a similar state of frustration having reached the same deficit. Ram Vaswani, known as an honorable man, completed all 18 holes and ended up owing $900,000. In total, Phil Ivey and his caddy took the Brits for a whopping $1.8 million. To their surprise, they later found out that Eric Lindgren had stopped giving Phil Ivey any advantage or shots in their game. What? After this information came out, all the three refused to pay saying that they had been conned and that Ivy was a much better player than he had let on. They did not do their homework 
and had lost the negotiation game. Did they really think Phil Ivey, one of the all-time greatest, was going to just keep donating huge stacks of cash to them? People familiar with the situation, including Phil Ivey, had revealed that Ram Vaswani and Goodwin had the chance to leave the game. However, they believed that Phil Ivey would eventually lose his composure, so they continued playing and raising the wagers. Despite their efforts, Ivy remained composed and as a result, their losses continued to mount. A meeting was arranged prior to EPT Monte Carlo in an attempt to address the issue. Barry Greenstein participated as one of the mediators, but no resolution was reached. Many in the poker world were taking sides in this dispute. In general, Americans view Phil Ivey's action as a legitimate hustle, while Europeans perceived it as cheating. Golf is fundamentally built on the concept of accurate and honest handicaps. In this context, their loss did not occur due to their poor performance, but because vital information was concealed, rendering the match essentially pointless. On the other hand, Duel Brunson and Daniel Legrano both publicly stated that they felt Ivy should be paid the full amount that he was owed. Shortly after the controversy, the issue was resolved in a manner typical of many similar disputes. A closed-door arbitration committee was assembled at the Bellagio. Chip Reese, Eric Sackstrom and Gus Hansen listened to all perspectives on that matter. Allegedly, the matter has been settled and the decision has been kept confidential by mutual agreement. Regardless of how the situation was resolved, the mere fact that Mark Goodwin and Ram Boswani tried to use the accusation of hustling to avoid payment spoke volumes about the attitudes prevalent among young golfers during the poker boom. In the past, when poker pros were both swindling and were being swindled regularly, hustling was an integral part of the game. For instance, Puggy Pearson narrowly escaped being shot after he manipulated his ball's position during a significant match against Jimmy Chagra, a well-known target in the 1970s. Russ Hamilton, the winner of the WSOP main event and a notoriously cunning golf opponent, once expressed amazement stating, Average golfers do not have the audacity to intentionally miss a hole. They always play to the best of their abilities. But not Russ. If a hole doesn't matter, he was willing to intentionally mess it up to improve his chances in the match or in future games. The question is, did Phil Ivey hustle Vaswani and Goodwin? Was he dishonest about exactly how much he had played in the past few months? Or were Vaswani and Goodwin sharks themselves that could not handle the fact that they were losing? Let us know in the comments on what you think.